video is gonna cover everything about knee meniscus tears and how to treat it from home. So I'm first starting off with anatomy, signs and symptoms to a tear, steps to conservative treatment, knowing your surgical options, and I'm also reviewing the new stem cell research that's going on and how it's impacting the knee meniscus healing time. So you don't wanna miss this. As a bonus by the end, I'll also be giving out a starter kit of exercise you can start trying from home if you think you do have a knee meniscus tear. So let's knee into it. So knee meniscus tears is the most prevalent type of knee injury due to its complexity and uniqueness of the knee meniscus tissue type compared to any other tissue type found in the body. So the purpose of the knee meniscus is both to absorb both compressive and tensile forces put on the knee joint and this is loading styles put on multiple directions. So first considering the position of the knee meniscus, in each knee it's going to be found between the tibia and the femoral condyles, and in here we're going to find two semi-lunar shaped menisci, which is the medial and the lateral menisci. So unlike other tissue types like bone, ligaments, or tendon, the phenotype of the menisci is going to be a fibral cartilage that's made up of both type 1 and type 2 cartilage, water, and a bunch of other types of proteins that gives it this viscoelastic characteristic. And because of this viscoelasticity characteristic, it enables it to take both compressive and tensile forces put on the knee joint. Now one of the main issues with knee meniscus tears and its potential for healing is due to its vascularity. Now there are three different zones of vascularity that we categorize for the knee meniscus. So starting with the outermost layer, it's going to have the best vascularity going to the knee meniscus. The middle layer is going to have a fair amount and the inner layer is going to have minimal to no vascularity going to that meniscus tissue. So depending on where your meniscus tear is and based off of these zones of vascularity, it's going to give us a prognosis on how well that tear is going to heal in the future and what other potential treatment methods we may need to initiate. Now moving on to the more clinical signs and symptoms of a knee meniscus tear, these signs and symptoms help clinicians determine if you do have a knee meniscus tear prior to any type of imaging done. So some of these attributes could include knee popping or clicking that's audible, you can have pain and difficulty with knee bending activities where pain is more localized at the knee joint line or at the posterior knee. You could have knee pain during knee twisting activities, either in standing or sitting. You might be unable to fully straighten your knee, and you might also be, feel like your knee is stuck in a certain position. And swelling could also be present, and also the difficulty in walking due to a limp. Now, just to take note that everybody's signs and symptoms might be a little bit different due to the type of knee meniscus tear that might be present and the severity of the tear. So this is not a black and white situation and everybody's pain experience and signs and symptoms might be a little bit different. And another thing that's important to note is that some individuals might have a knee meniscus tear but be completely asymptomatic from that tear. And we know this through the research that some individuals were given an MRI which showed a knee meniscus tear and they were completely asymptomatic with no signs and symptoms present. So again, this just goes to show that everybody's pain experience might be a little bit different and these signs and symptoms might vary to a degree or may not be present at all. So how does one get a knee meniscus tear? Well, there are basically two types of causes to this, and the first one is going to be more of a traumatic one. So this is going to include or be in combination of high compressive, shear, or rotational forces being put on the knee. So typically this is going to involve your sports that have running, jumping, or cutting activities as it allows for the correct conditions and environment for traumatic injury to happen insidiously. And the second type of cause is going to be atraumatic or more of a gradual onset to a knee meniscus tear. So similar to the traumatic reasons, the same abnormal forces are going to be put onto the knee, but to a lesser severity and over a longer period of time. So 
What's different about this is that our environmental conditions have changed where possibly there is a weaker knee and there's less stability at the knee joint. We may be using abnormal knee mechanics during activity. And we can also be adding in comorbidities that add degenerative or arthritic changes to the knee joint which just potentiates the opportunity for a knee meniscus tear to occur. All right, so moving on to more of the treatment side of things, everybody's pathway to treatment is going to be a little bit different from person A to B. So this just kind of depends on your age, your activity level every day, your response to your symptoms, and potentially how severe the meniscus tear is. Now, if you're in the first one to two weeks of your knee injury, I would first recommend doing a rest and recover approach with a gradual return back to your normal activities. And this is something, a step you can take that's conservative before you may have sought out medical attention. Now in the next two to six weeks, if your knee symptoms have become unchanged or they are getting worse, the gold standard for conservative treatment is to first initiate physical therapy. Now, typically physical therapy for knee is going to last six to 12 weeks, and this is based off of a couple factors on your knee biomechanics, your knee strength, your knee range of motion, and a bunch of other points a physical therapist may evaluate. Now, going along with this, you may be initiated to begin treatment with a medical physician or orthopedic surgeon where they will help assist with the pain experience by prescribing pain medication, or potentially down the line that you might receive a cortisone steroid injection to help with your knee symptoms and pain during activity. Now this is just a summary of what conservative management may look like in the United States, but if this begins to not work out and your symptoms are still getting worse or unchanged within those six to 12 weeks of a good effort, on the conservative management side, we may have to look at other options which may include surgical methods. All right, so moving on to more of the surgical methods utilized in the US, one of the top surgeries still utilized is going to be a knee partial meniscectomy. So this basically means that a surgeon is gonna go in and remove part of the meniscus that has a tear in it. Now this can be a good thing for the patient post-operative and acutely because their pain symptoms may be completely abolished. However, the research is demonstrating that there are long-term health effects and risks to your knee joint integrity due to this meniscus being removed and this can lead into like faster degenerative changes happening in the long run. Now, something to observe in the research, they're showing that 24 months post-operative, physical therapy compared to this knee meniscectomy surgery was non-inferior. So this is something to keep in mind, um, depending on your goals in the future. The knee meniscectomy surgery is still a potential option for somebody, but it just depends on your future activity goals. So seeing the potential long-term health effects of your knee joint integrity after a knee partial meniscectomy, this has led to more novel surgery types, which is going to be your knee meniscus repairs. So this basically means that a surgeon is gonna go in and try to suture or close up the knee meniscus tear, and postoperatively, you may be receiving up to about 12 weeks of physical therapy. So this is both an intrinsic factor to fix the torn meniscus and an extrinsic factor, which includes physical therapy, to rehabilitate that whole knee or lower extremity. So these knee meniscus repair surgeries sound really great, but there are actually still some barriers from individuals having a complete recovery. And this has to do with the low vascularity of the meniscus and two thirds of the entire meniscus tissue. And because of this low vascularity and depending on like where your tear is, we still may have a low prognosis on that tear completely healing despite the suture and the knee meniscus repair. So therefore, this has led researchers to make more advancements on the stem cell research for specifically the knee meniscus tissue. And they're trying to combine this with the knee meniscus repair surgeries. So there's a lot of cool new research happening right now that involves stem cell research and biological augmentation to the knee meniscus. And there are three main methods that are being researched right now to enhance the meniscus healing. And this is going to be stem cell augmentation, scaffolds, and your growth factors. 
So beginning with the stem cell augmentation method, stem cells basically means that they are undifferentiated cells that have the ability to differentiate into various types of cells and in this case, the knee meniscus tissue type. And they're taking three different types of sources for these stem cells to develop into differentiated meniscus cell types. And this is going to be adipose tissue, mesenchymal cells, and bone marrow sources. Now, so far, stem cell augmentation is showing positive effects in the lab where the meniscus tissue is indeed differentiating and growing but still like long-term effects and studies need to be done on human subjects and their methods still need improvement with these various source types of the stem cells. So scaffolds means that researchers are taking materials to support the growth of new tissue and damage to parts of the meniscus. So there are basically two scaffold methods that they're researching and this is going to be acellular or synthetic materials and cellular, which they're using other cell type tissues. So both of these scaffold methods show promising results in the future as they're both demonstrating meniscus cell growth, but still more research is needed to confirm this in human subjects. And the last biological augmentation method is going to be growth factors. And this is basically just a bunch of proteins to help stimulate the growth of the meniscus tissue and is also demonstrating positive effects in the lab. So in summary, all these three biological augmentation methods are demonstrating positive results in the lab for knee meniscus tissue growth. However, more studies still need to be done to standardize these methods and to compare these studies against people receiving knee meniscus repair surgeries only. But until that day comes, there is still one thing you can start doing today, and that is completing your knee exercises. So enough of this talk. Let's get to the mat. All right, so let's take it to the knee. And I hope you've learned so much so far about how to manage your knee meniscus pain, or at least how to get started on managing it. Other than that, if you like this video, you can go ahead, like, subscribe to the channel, or give me a comment or question below. I'll do my best to get back to you in a meaningful time. Other than that, have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.